Britain is crammed full of crowded airports. Now the government wants one more, with an extremely long runway, able to handle aircraft flying to and from suborbital space. It has now shortlisted eight potential sites for a spaceport to be up and running by 2018. Here at the Farnborough Air Show, it's usually more about commercial aircraft and fighter jets. But the British government used this show to announce a massive increase in its space industry something the government says is already worth more than $18 billion to the economy. We have a clear ambition for the UK to capture 10% of a global space market likely to be worth around £400 billion by 2030. Britain's business secretary told me this is a logical step for the country. The idea of having a space port where craft can land, take off, be maintained mm. is part of our ambition for the industry. We think that by 2030 we could have 100,000 people working in that industry. It's uh, got tremendous potential. The U.S. state of New Mexico teamed up with Virgin founder Richard Branson back in 2005 to build a spaceport. In May, Virgin Galactic got clearance from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration to use airspace for routine space flights a step closer to commercial and leisure flights. Sweden is building a spaceport as well, which could be used by Virgin Galactic. Now, another European country enters the spaceport race. I have visited the UK uh, industry pavilion, and I must say that I have heard much more about economy than about space, which is a demonstration that uh, uh, we are now in the economic dimension. Spaceports also handle commercial rocket launches, a proven business model. And while Britain and other countries build spaceports for reusable commercial spacecraft, they're flying into the unknown, perhaps, as there has yet to be even the first passenger flight. Jim Bolden, CNN, Farnborough, England.